My name is Greg McLean, I'm 27 years old and I'm Executive Support Officer at Cheshire County Football Association. So within football I've got a lot of different hats really. Um, I set up and launched the team nine years ago, St Margaret's Old Boys, which I run in Liverpool. Um, that's a former student team for the school I used to go to. I'm also uh, on a panel of uh, league committee, so I run a league in Liverpool. Football's been a massive part of my life, I think, since I was old enough to stand up. I had a football at my feet from a very young age, really. Um, I think it was my dad always encouraged me to be kicking the ball around the living room. And then once I got old enough, probably about five or six, I think it was the World Cup France 98 when I really started getting interested in football. I think the the goal Michael Owen scored against Argentina was the was the goal that sort of really got me in, engaged in football really. Uh, from that point on it was it was a big part of my life. I think when you go to secondary school and obviously there's a lot of you go through a lot of change, there's you know your body's changing, your mind's changing, your thoughts are changing. And when I was in secondary school, you do start questioning everything naturally at that age. And a lack of LGBT education, particularly on the school curriculum, means that your questions go unanswered. And that then leads to a lot of self-doubt. And it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult path to end up going down, really. When you're on the schoolyard and you're amongst friends and other, other young people, you hear lots of comments going around that are potentially derogatory towards gay people or any member of the LGBT community. And it almost brings a sense of shame and a sense of fear, which shouldn't happen because you're an equal part of that community, but you're made to feel as though you're not. And that's something that I certainly felt during my time at school, which made school very difficult. In sixth form, it was particularly difficult. I went to an all boys school and then in sixth form, it was a mixed, it was a mixed sixth form. So, you had the added difficulty then of the interaction communication with girls, which obviously for five years hadn't been the case. I think that added to my confusion. And I had a sense of wanting to fit in with the lads. And obviously you join in with the, the jokes and get involved and things like that. And, and it wasn't in any way, shape or form being who I was. It, it, it was all an act. So then the longer you act, the more tired you become of carrying that sort of burden on your shoulders um, and it just it just became very difficult to be honest so once that sort of two-year period in sixth form was was over it was a case of job done but then I think that whole anxiety had grown over that period and that sort of meant I didn't go to university because I was fearful of anxiety, social anxiety, different situations that may put me in a compromised position um, and potentially reveal who I really was. So in order to sort of keep up that facade, I ended up staying and working in the school I actually went to. Um, my boss at the time, who was a very close friend, um, had noticed there was something not right about me and my character and who I was, you know, in work. Um, and eventually after a number of conversations we'd had, it sort of came to light. What I was actually revealing to him was, was about my sexuality. Um, and it, it, was, it, was a, it took a lot of difficult conversations for me to actually be able to say that I was gay. And because that, that to me at the time was massively embarrassing and I was ashamed of who I was. And I think that was why I was so down about it. But once I'd actually taken that burden off my shoulders of telling just one person the impact that had on me was so massive it was it's hard to explain it um, but once I knew that one person knew who I was that sort of gradually built my confidence back up and over a period of time I, I was able to accept within myself who I was and the fact that I was a gay man and I it wasn't a choice, It was that was who I was and it's who I am. Um, and eventually I plucked up the courage after a few weeks um, to actually sit down and tell my family, which my parents are separated, so I had to have that conversation twice. Now that was a, 
the most nerve-wracking conversation I've ever had to have and probably ever likely to have because you don't know what to expect. Naturally, it was a very nervous situation, but the response I got was one of complete and utter support and, and love, which, is, which was a great relief um, and a massive weight lifted off my shoulders. And I felt from that point onwards, I was actually able to be the real me with my family, which was, which was great, it was a great feeling. Although the, it was a really positive outcome in terms of telling my family, I still didn't feel as though I was in a position with my confidence levels to actually tell the football team lads of my situation. So I made the difficult decision, I was, I was actually manager of the team at the time, I made the difficult decision to, to step away and I didn't actually tell them the full reason why, obviously I just said I wasn't in the right frame of mind at that moment to, to manage the team. So I walked away and it was, a, it was a really sad moment for me because it meant that for, for a team that I had set up and, and, and ran for so many years, I was walking away from that because I didn't feel confident enough to actually be that true self with those players because I was scared of what their reaction may be. Would they be embarrassed about playing for a game manager? You know, all the, all the different stereotypes that may go with that. So it was, a, it, was a, it was frustrating to have to walk away. In my private life with the family and everything, it, it was, I was a much happier person. It took a good four or five months before I felt comfortable enough in myself to be able to say, right, these players have, have known me for a number of years. They, they deserve to know the truth as to why I've walked away. And at least then they can make their own decisions on, on how they take that news. And I obviously did so not knowing what the response would be. It was a bit of a risk, if you like. But the response I got was absolutely tremendous in terms of the, not, it wasn't just a one-line reply. Every one of those players took, took the time to send me a personal message back to say that they were absolutely gutted that I'd left because of that and they, they were upset at the fact that they, they were saddened that I felt that way, that I needed to walk away because I couldn't be who I was and that it didn't change their opinion of me which was, which was vital for me because I always, I always care what people think about me naturally, I think, I think most people do. So for them to actually accept who I was and to get that support, it was, it was, it was such a heartwarming feeling um, and I was able to return to the club you know, within days of that message. So, so it, was a, it, was a, it was a great ending to what was a pretty sad, sad start. Inclusion within football and within any sport is absolutely vital. I think as someone who's experienced difficulties in wanting to fit in and trying to fit in, it's, it's certainly become apparent to me that having an environment that is welcoming, that is accepting and that is engaging with everybody can have such massive rewards for individuals who may be going through a difficult time. It's often dressing room jokes or clusters banter where people will make a comment and it's not meant to come across the way it does. And although the person who's making those comments might not mean it to come across like that, that's how it could be read by someone who may be in that situation. And that, that relates to all different types of, of discrimination. That's not just in terms of you know, the LGBT community. So I would say I, I would always be an advocate of, of honesty and openness because without those you can't actually show the world your true authentic self, which is what the world wants you to be. There's always a fear of what people think of you and want to be accepted and want to be liked. And obviously, in my experience, people can surprise you. I, I had prepared myself when I was telling friends, when I was telling family, I prepared myself for a negative response and I was going in on a defensive. Almost actually prepared for conflict if you like to sort of be able to have to justify who I was and the reaction I got was the complete opposite and I think that's one thing I would certainly say is that people people can surprise you 
people are very accepting now and it's something that has definitely changed over the past few years and hopefully will continue to change in a positive vein but I would definitely say that people can surprise you and that goes for your family, your friends or your teammates. So we're extremely lucky to be involved in football in a very inclusive county here at Cheshire. So throughout this Rainbow Laces campaign, let's support the LGBT community and make sure that Cheshire is for all.